The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Revelation chapter 13, verses 15 through 18. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. In the 18th verse of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation, the Bible clearly states that 666 is the number of a man. The Word of God wants you to know that the Antichrist is a man and not a system. He is a man and not a government. He is a man and not an institution. He is a man and not an establishment. He is a man and not a force. He is a man and not an idea. He is a man and not a theology. No, the Word of God wants to make it clear that you know when we talk about the Antichrist, we are talking about a man and what a man he will be. The Bible describes this man as the beast of the sea. This symbolic description of the Antichrist as the beast of the sea reveals a tremendous amount about his nature, his origin, and his character. It is interesting to see that although the Antichrist is a man, God does not view him as a man made in the divine image of God, but rather God views him as a beast, as a wild animal, under the control of the dragon. Satan. We see in the second verse of the 13th chapter of the book of Revelation who gave the Antichrist his power. Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. It is Satan who gave him his power and great authority. Many people grossly underestimate the power and authority Satan has. First, let's establish something important. The Bible often refers to Satan as the God of this age. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, or in the prince of the power of the air. We see this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. These designations give insight to Satan's temporary authority and influence in the earthly realm. John's epistle even asserts 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. These passages together suggest that Satan does have some measure of authority over the kingdoms of this world, at least for a season. Now, when Jesus was offered these kingdoms, it wasn't because Satan had ultimate ownership over them. Rather, it's because in the fallen state of the world, Satan has been allowed a temporary rulership. But Jesus, recognizing the deceptive nature of the offer and the requirement to worship Satan, declined, quoting scripture in response, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. As previously stated, scripture states that the dragon, another name for Satan, will give his power, throne, and great authority to the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. The Antichrist will be energized by the very power of hell. God does not view the Antichrist, who is the beast from the sea, and the false prophet, the beast from the earth, as men made in the divine image of God. Instead, God views them as beasts, as wild animals under the control of the dragon, Satan. This is so important, and it sheds light on the fact that all other human beings who have lived and do not accept Christ will be judged at the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15. Only two unredeemed human beings miss out on this great white throne judgment, the Antichrist and the false prophet. They are not even judged. They are directly cast into the lake of fire. This should show you that these two people are not normal individuals. These two people will be fueled by a level of evil unlike the world has ever seen before. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, 
where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. The Antichrist will be evil like no other. Just as Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, so the beast will be Satan in a human body. And he has the number 666. Anytime you see the number 666, you need to be aware and cautious. For that is not a number you want to be associated with. Many rock bands and media outlets play with the number 666, but that number is something you should not want anything to do with. I remember a few decades ago, I bought a phone and three of the numbers in that mobile number were 666. I said, no thank you sir, and called the provider to get that number changed. Imagine being a pastor, handing out your number to people, and then saying 666. That is not a good look. Never have anything to do with that number, for it is the number of a man. It is the number of a beast. Now today, I want to talk about the day the world chose the mark of the beast. In the panorama of biblical prophecy, one of the most riveting scenes is undoubtedly when the mark of the beast is introduced and accepted. The world will choose the mark of the beast, just the same way the world chose to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. This stark and chilling moment in future history is more than just an end time spectacle. It holds a profound mirror to humanity's choices and allegiances. Choices have consequences, and we are all given a choice. Choices have consequences. Remember that the beast is a counterfeit Christ. It's crucial to understand this. The Antichrist is Satan's master, attempt to mock, mimic, and malign the genuine savior, Jesus Christ. Satan has always been about imitation, albeit a twisted one. Just as false coinage reveals the value of true currency, so the appearance of the Antichrist underscores the value and verity of Jesus Christ. However, here's the bitter irony. This world would not receive the true Jesus Christ, but it will receive the Antichrist. It's a choice that resonates with profound consequences. Choices have consequences. Each and every one of us, when we are born in this life, is given the option to make choices and our choices bear eternal consequences. Not a single one of us will cease to exist 100 years from now, or a thousand years from now, or even a million years from now. The choices we make are eternal. Choices have consequences. We live in a world that attempts to sugarcoat, a world that tries to blur the lines, a world that tries to hide the fact that choices have consequences. Although the mark of the beast is not in operation today, you and I have a choice to make. It's either Jesus Christ, or the Antichrist. In one way or another, there's no middle ground. The days the world rejected Christ is when the world tacitly, perhaps unknowingly, accepted the Antichrist and the markings of his dominion. The day the world chose the mark of the beast was not a sudden leap into darkness, but a culmination of many choices made in rejection of the light of the world. You see, if we reject Jesus Christ, it's almost inevitable that we'll accept the Antichrist. One can't simply remain neutral in matters of eternal significance. When Jesus proclaimed, He who is not with me is against me, he presented a dichotomy that stands true even in end time scenarios. When we push away truth, there's only one thing left to embrace, deception. There's no middle ground. When we push away truth, there's only one thing left to embrace, deception. There is no middle ground. And how this world has pushed away the truth that is the Lord Jesus Christ. The world rejected the truth of Jesus Christ, but tragically, the world will believe the lie of the Antichrist. It's as if humanity's spiritual compass, having lost its true north, will be all too willing to follow a false magnetic pole. And how this false magnetic pole will come. The world will have never seen one like the Antichrist. People will love him and worship him, and those who do not love him and worship him will be coerced into worshiping him. Furthermore, consider the depths of deception. The world will not worship Christ, the one who bore their sins, the one who wore the crown of thorns and extended grace freely. Yet they will bow down to the Antichrist, the embodiment of everything opposed to grace, love, and truth. It reminds me of Jesus' words in John chapter 5, verse 43. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. The essence of this verse highlights how choices have consequences. Choices can either lead to life or usher in calamity, particularly eternal calamity. The world's choice to reject Jesus Christ, God incarnate, the embodiment of love, grace, and truth, opens the door for a substitute 
that is a polar opposite. The Antichrist, who embodies hatred, lawlessness, and deception. The day the world chose the mark of the beast won't merely be a day of temporal consequence. It will reveal the eternal consequence of the choices humans have been making all along. By rejecting Christ, humanity essentially leaves a void. Nature abhors a vacuum, and so does the spiritual realm. That void will be filled by the one who comes in his own name. Unlike Jesus who came to do the will of his Father, the Antichrist will come to do his own will and, by extension, the will of Satan, the father of lies. The Antichrist will not point people to God. Rather, he will point people to himself and demand worship for himself. The world will be so deceived that it will believe this to be a reasonable and necessary act. The acceptance of the Antichrist and his mark will be the culmination of humanity's choices against God, a climax of rebellion, a pinnacle of collective delusion. The day the world chose the mark of the beast will be a day marked by unprecedented spiritual blindness, a blindness that could have been avoided had the world accepted Jesus, the light of the world. The Antichrist's dominion will be unlike anything the world has ever seen. His empire will stretch across continents, engulfing nations and cultures from the east to the west, north to the south. No corner of the earth will remain untouched by his pervasive influence. His reign will bring with it a unity of control where every political, economic, and social system bends to his will. People from diverse backgrounds, languages, and beliefs will find themselves under the shadow of his omnipresent authority. Technology, trade, and communication channels will be wielded as instruments of his dominance, ensuring that resistance is quelled and conformity is enforced. This unparalleled global rule will consolidate power in his hands, making him not just a political leader, but a force that seeks to dictate the very conscious and soul of humanity. In conclusion, while the Antichrist will have his temporary moment, the eternal victory belongs to Jesus Christ. So as we study prophecy and look ahead to what's coming, let's also examine our hearts today. Let our choices reflect our allegiance to the true Christ and not be swayed by the world's ever-increasing deceptions. For in understanding the counterfeit, we can more deeply appreciate, honor, and commit to the genuine Savior. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.